everyone welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new in today's video i'm going to show you how i did these freddy krueger nightmare on elm street nails if you haven't already please feel free to subscribe to my channel and turn on your post notifications so that you don't miss out on any new videos and without further ado let's get right into the video I started out with extra long tapered square tips that I got from Amazon and then I just cut them down to my desired length. I do use magnets on my tip cutters so that I can make sure that all of the nails are the same length without measuring. Um, I did make sure to clean and soak my brush this time in the monomer to make sure I don't have any issues with application. I'm using a size 12 Kalinske brush from Young Nails. I do need to buy a new one because that's the reason why this particular nail brush that I'm using right now gets clogged up so bad is because um, it's getting old and I you're not supposed to soak your brush in acetone but I do sometimes just to make sure I get all the dried up acrylic out of my brush so I definitely need to get a new one um, but this one I think it's like $52 on Young Nails website and don't get me wrong, this brush is good, but I will not pay $52 for a nail brush. Um, I bought this one on Black Friday, so I think I paid like 30 bucks for it. And again, I'm not paying $52 for this brush. So I'm just gonna wait until Black Friday comes around again pretty soon and I'll buy me a new brush. As always, I'm using my Mia Secret Cover Pink paired with my Young Nails Monomer. I do get this acrylic powder from Amazon. It's very accessible and affordable, um, and it is beginner friendly. So if you're looking for some good new pink acrylic, I would definitely recommend this Mia Secret Cover Pink. Um, I'm actually almost out. I'm down to my last four ounce jar, so I'm probably going to try to stretch it as long as I can before Black Friday and see if they have some Black Friday price cuts on Amazon for this Mia Secret powder. Um, but if I can't make it stretch, I do have other um, nude acrylic. I think I have a four ounce jar of Bad Enough by Dynamic Nail Supply. Um, I've used it a couple times. I don't particularly care for it because it's a little bit too pink and a little bit too sheer for my liking. Um, but what I may do, because sometimes when I'm running low on acrylic, I just start mixing my nude acrylic powders together and just come up with a random um, base color. So what I might do is, because I'm like halfway done with this four ounce jar of Mia Secret, I might just pour the rest of that um, Bad Enough in with this and just make my own custom nude acrylic. And I think that will be good enough to last me until the Black Friday sale start popping up on Amazon. Okay, so I did tell y'all in my last video that I finally reached my 1000 subscriber goal. So I do want to do a giveaway. I just don't know what I want to give. I know I want to pick two winners because I know some of y'all are nail techs, but some of y'all are not nail techs. So I don't want to just pick a winner and just give away nail products because Obviously, I know some of y'all just enjoy watching nail videos and you're not actually a nail tech. So just leave me a comment in the comment section of what you think would be some good prizes to give away. Um, if you are a nail tech, you can leave me a comment and tell me what is a good prize that you would like as a nail tech. And then if you are a just subscriber that loves to watch nail videos, let me know in the comment section what you would like for me to have as my giveaway prize. Once I come up with the ideas, then I'll try to come up with some criteria for you guys to be able to enter in to win the prizes. Uh, more than likely, I'll just go on Google and pull up like one of those randomizers and just put y'all's names in there. That way it's fair and everyone has a chance to win. And then I'll announce it on my upcoming videos. I don't know uh, when the next video, when exactly I'm going to announce it because I got to figure out what, what I'm going to do. But just stay tuned and I'll let you all know when I'm ready to do the giveaway. Here I'm just placing down a medium sized bead um, right where the nail tip meets the nail plate and I'm just bringing it down slowly. Um, just making sure that I'm continuously wiping so that my nail application is nice and smooth. Making sure that I'm wiping the sides. 
um, so that my nail doesn't look all wide and bulky. I'm just trying to keep the shape as much as I possibly can so that I don't have to do all that extra filing at the end. I'm placing my second bead right above the first and I'm just bringing that down. This will be my apex bead. I don't have to do a super high apex simply because these nails will be popped off right after I'm done. So I'm not trying to build super high structure. I'll place my final bead above the second one a little bit away from the cuticle and allow it to just flow in on its own, making sure that I clean up any acrylic that may have got on the skin before I go ahead and move on to the next nail. I'm not gonna ramble through the rest of this application. I'll go ahead and let you all watch and then I'll pop back in on the next step. Now I'm taking my 5-in-1 medium grit carbide bit to clean up these nails and seal the cuticles. I'll clean the sides and underneath the nails. Um, I may go over the body of the nails a little bit if I feel like I need to debulk these nails. But for the most part, I'm just using my 80-80 grit hand file to really crisp up the shape and then smooth out the surface a little bit. I have my e-file at about 18,000 RPMs for this step. As you can see, I forgot to grab my dust collector again, as always. But honestly, I really feel like I only need it when I'm doing a soak off because it's just so much filing that you have to do for a soak off. I don't have too, too much filing that I do with the e-file whenever I'm just sealing in the cuticles. So honestly, I don't really feel like I absolutely need to use it. And I honestly think it's about time for me to replace my, um, my drill bits pretty soon. I do have a few medium grit safety bits that I bought a long time ago, but ever since I started using this five in one bit, I don't like using those safety bits no more just because I can't get as close to the cuticle area, obviously because it's a safety bit and that's what it's for to make sure that you don't um, nick your clients, but it just doesn't give me that crisp cuticle area as I would like. So, um, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and order a couple more of these same 
uh, medium grit drill bits that I get from Amazon. Um, I think they're from Panna, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, I think they're from Panna, but they work really well, so I'll probably order some more of those. And y'all, I'm fairly new to this YouTube game, so learning how to put all these links and put all this, you know, stuff in my videos, I'm learning slowly but surely. Um, but if I forget to put a link of something that I used in my video and you kind of want to know what it is, please feel free to comment in my comment section and ask the question because I am not a gatekeeper when it comes to what I use in my videos. So just let me know and I'll go ahead and see if I can find the link of where I got it from. Look how nice those cuticles look. That shape is coming through, honey. All right, y'all, now I'm taking my 8080 grit hand file that I get from my local nail supply store just to crisp up the shape and smooth off the surface of these nails. Um, you absolutely can use your e-file for this step. I much rather prefer to use my hand file. I've just been doing it for, for such a long time now, and I'm pretty fast with this step. Um, so I personally feel like it smooths out the nail a lot better than the e-file does. So you'll see me going in on these nails with my hand file. And then once I'm done, I'll go ahead and buff these nails and we can move on to the nail art. And as you know, I do use the pop off method for my nail sets when I record on YouTube. Um, I did not put the cuticle oil on the base of my nails before I put the peel off base coat this time. So yes, I'm going in on these nails as much as I can to get this shape as crisp as possible. And I know for a fact these nails are not gonna pop off until I'm ready to take them off at the end of the set. It may look like I'm being super aggressive, but I'm actually not. I just have this video sped up just a tad bit so it doesn't take forever for me to file these nails but i'll let you all finish watching me go ahead and get these nails filed and then i'll pop in on the next step Here I'm taking my mini pink sponge buffers that I got off Shein to get rid of all the scratches that I may have left behind by my e-file and my hand file. These work okay, but I do have some orange ones. I don't remember if I got them from my local nail supply store or if I got them from Amazon, but they work so much better than these. Um, I just got these because they match the pink aesthetic of my nail room, so I'm just gonna keep using them until I run out, but I probably won't buy them again but I definitely don't want to waste them either. Here, I'm just taking my pink heart-shaped lint-free wipes and some alcohol to go ahead and clean off the surface of all of these nails so that I can go ahead and prepare for my nail art. I do matte top coat all of these nails off camera before I start my nail art. It does give for a smoother base, especially when you're doing Frenchies. So for my girlies that do struggle with doing French tips, if you have a nice smooth matte top coat base, you will be able to glide across the nails much easier when it's time to do the French tip. I'm taking my 20 millimeter liner brush to get started on these red French tips. I'll be doing the French tip on the pinky, the pointer, and the thumbnail. This will be the base for Freddie's red and green striped shirt. Once I'm done, I'll cure these nails in the lamp for 60 seconds. I'll let you watch and then I'll pop back in on the next step.
Now I'm just taking this green gel polish that I got from LA Nail Reserve to go ahead and do the stripes on all of the red French tip nails. Um, if you would like to try this gel polish out, feel free to use my link in the bio of section of this video, or you can use my code new nailed it for 50% off your order of two or more. The middle finger is going to be the Elm Street sign, so I'm just going to use that same green gel polish that I used for the stripes on the middle finger. And I'll go ahead and write in the word Elm with my white D&D gel polish, and then I'll also outline the nails with that same white gel polish.
for the ring finger. I saw this technique on Instagram. This is my first time trying this, so I was actually very pleased with how it came out. I did use the solid sculpting gel that everyone's been using for those 3D flowers that were trending over the summer. Um, I covered the entire nail and then I used my cuticle pusher to carve out the cuts. Once I got the cuts done, I went ahead and cured these nails in the lamp for 60 seconds before I went in with my red gel polish to add into the cracks of the nails. Um, that way it looks like kind of like blood. I figured these nails would look much better in matte, so I went ahead and matte top coated all the nails except for the ones with the cut. And then I popped the nails in the lamp for a full two minutes just to make sure that they were fully, fully cured. The last thing I'm doing is just splattering all the nails with just a little bit of blood. I'm going to finish off with some cuticle oil and that will conclude this video. I do hope you all enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you all. Um, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you in my next one. Bye for now.